big shit, love. big shit, big shit. Huh. Well, Name another I'm podcast honest, like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding. The greatest <laughs> official, Mr. Maker. What's going on? Not nah, nothing. Nah, I'm a dad. Walk on. Man, hey man, listen, man. We got a guy in here today, y'all. This guy right here. I was told, man, you got to interview this guy, man. This guy got the perfect story, man. Yeah. So this guy know the city like P Diddy or something in New York or something. <laughs> but only in the D, nigga, the triple D, man. My boy Gun is in the building. What's up, man? Boss, I want to when I see you, my boy. Man, you finally made it, nigga, to the greatest, nigga. You know what I'm saying? We out here popping now, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm out here, hey, uh, hey. They say fake it till you make it, baby. I know. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> So man, um, man, it's just good to have you, man. You know, uh, being one of those guys, man, that been around the city, got a history in the city. You know, oh. what I'm saying, heard you might even have a few dance moves, no. all kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, what I'm talking about, nigga. You been known to bust a move on a nigga. Yeah, <laughs> man, you know, started out now here, man. C. James was the body rock and swing back in your nation days and shit. Man. Go on and but go you know, down okay, through that. Well, for me personally, I like to know the person, not mm -hmm. because of the music, not because of the dances, not because I. I wanted to know where you were raised, how yeah. you were raised, the environment, the whole works. Uh man, I was raised. I was in, I was in Memphis till fourteen. Moved from Memphis uh, out here to Dallas. I started in Cedar Hill, DeSoto. So I went to Soto. Why the move? He running from the laws? Nah. I don't tell you that. Anytime you're in Memphis, too many niggas <laughs> down 14. there, man. Them niggas in Memphis yeah. run from the laws. I know about them niggas. You know, in, you was in Tunica, you stole a, a nigga emblem off his car, and you end up in Dallas, nigga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, man. You nah, know, go ahead. One of them things, uh, mom just wanted a better environment for me, so, you know, ended up moving to uh, Texas, had family out here. So I started in DeSoto. So you said with your mom, so where was your pops? Uh, I guess he was in LA. I ain't, I ain't really, I ain't meet him till I got to Texas. Really? Yeah. So you didn't know him growing up all the way to fourteen. Nah, I ain't know him then. Did you ever ask? I mean, it never really crossed my mind at that age. I ain't care. Really? Yeah, I really didn't care. Did you have male figures? Yeah, I had my cousin Jonathan. He was around okay. me, and then I had uh my cousin Dwight and all them in Memphis. That was, you know, moving how they move. So you didn't <laughs> feel like you missed anything? Nah, not at all. I ain't feel like I missed nothing. So the first time you saw him or met him, what did you say to him? I was like, I told my auntie, I was, we was at the airport, I said, you going to introduce me to the man? Because I didn't know who he was. He's like, it's your daddy, boy. I'm like, it's my daddy. He don't even look like me. <laughs> I don't know this man. Who is this? So we got the acquainted, and then, you know, I finally met him, 14, and then he went back to Cali probably like a week later. So y'all don't keep in contact or nothing? Oh, yeah, we talk now. It's good. So y'all good now? I, I, I guess I was okay. I ain't really, I ain't really look at it as if, like, Oh, he wasn't there because I never had the time to really focus on it as a kid. I was always playing a, out in the way or some doing something else. So I ain't even focused on it. You have some uncles or people that yeah. really yeah, stepped in those positions. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, that that helps. I had uncles, so you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they be stepping in the way anyway. They going to they gonna tell you what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. real. I had that uncle, though, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. So um, was your mom like a strict mom or she was just like a cool uh, mom? I guess both. Uh, you know, try try to do best you can. You know, we ain't really have it all the way. So working sometimes, hard. Yeah, sometimes lose a job, get a done job, have to move, have to move, have to move. Stay with like different friends, moms, and stuff at times and stuff like that. You're Just the only to child. Out. No, I got a sister. Sister, younger, mm -hmm. older. She older. Older. So you baby boy, yeah, you I'm, just I'm spoiled. The baby boy. You yeah. spoiled, aren't you? Yeah, I mean they try to tell I was spoiled. I, I don't really, I don't want to spoil it for you. I ain't, we ain't have nothing to be spoiled, so. Might well work. That's true. So when did you find your love for the music? Uh, probably like around fifteen. You know, it's funny. You know, probably like my first album was the Usher album. Like a, uh -uh. I think it was. Uh, uh, nigga, that's it, right there. No, nigga ain't gonna laugh. That's serious. <laughs> nah, nigga. for real. Yeah, nigga, Usher, the the nigga that really will beat uh uh Chris Brown in a versus <laughs> song for song, but niggas want want to tell me Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson. Now go ahead, that, bro. Was the one with the uh, you got it bad on there. <laughs> Ooh, that's a hit right yeah, there, boy. He gonna bring that one first. Yeah, yeah. Was that your favorite song? <laughs> the, uh, What's your favorite Usher song? I think it was uh, at that time. It was um, what was that? Wasn't that movie when it was like it's seven o'clock? Hey, boy, that nigga sang yeah. too. I said, boy, that's it right there, boy. <laughs> nah, but for real, Ooh, that was, I used to love that song. Then the Fifty Cent, <laughs> then Walker Flocker. You know, all them uh, Gucci Man came in after that and shit. 
Yeah, that was yeah. Like 14, yeah, you got 15. the thug in the okay. den. That nigga was thug in the den mm-hmm. once the Gucci man yeah, came. Yeah, yeah. now pistol on the couch, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Pistol on the floor or something. You know, this nigga talking about hood rich yeah. and I never had a bank account. <laughs> nigga messing your whole mind up. You was a good usher at first, nigga. I would. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> niggas in there pop locking everything. That's how I get there. So, so, okay, one more question I wanted to get to for your childhood. Um, so being raised with a single mom and stuff like that, were you ever one that was drawn to the streets? Because I know a lot of people always uh, be like, the streets be calling. It wasn't even that I was drawn to it. It was more like, uh, she just ain't have nothing. So it was like, I was just always trying to find a scheme or something at that time. If it was still in something or anything like that. Uh, really just to like figure out something to get money in my pocket where I ain't have to ask nobody for nothing. Mm-hmm. Real talk, yeah, man. So let's go and get into it. Cause you was how old do you right now? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm 29 going on. 30. Look how you look. Okay, I'm just trying. I'm 31. I'm trying. Okay, yeah. 31. So you you was in the boogie era. Yeah, I was. you know I'm slick with it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so nigga. Mr. Hit That, you couldn't be Mr. Hit That, nigga. Man, come yeah, on. Yeah, nigga, man. I'll come on out with it. See, I know how to bring an interview. Y'all don't know. I'm crazy on, as man. hell over here. Mr. Hit I'm that thinking about when, the, when it all went down, that nigga was doing it. I seen a nigga on the video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but we, <laughs> turned, we, we turned it up on YouTube. We the reason so, people, people, who, who was your competition? It wasn't none. You know what I'm saying? When it was us, we was the ones on YouTube taking over. So who, it, like I said, who was the, who was your 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 like my when crew you, at that time? Yeah, your crew. It was Young Nation, cause like before Young Nation, it was Thug Boss, and you know Kendall and, uh, with Fame and uh, Fame and B. Reed, they was with Thug Boss at first, and me and my brother R. P. Willie, and then uh, T. John said we had all uh, came up with the name Young Nation Gang. Wow. So when we came up with Young Nation Gang, we called Fame. Was like, hey, y'all gonna be Young Nation? We be Young Nation Gang. We gonna dance? We we'll be gonna play our look. Dope. So then, you know, that's how everything started going, and they formed it. When uh, Fame and them was in Duncanville, they finally got it solidified, and then we just started dancing all that music. Wow. So when this happened, though, being in the picture, you really couldn't. You did you did you know how special it was? Because this boogie movement, this era, was an era that people will talk about forever. They talk about yeah. it now a lot. Did at you really time, realize what you were into at that time, man? We were high hell. Mm. We were just dancing, and having fun because we were brothers. We was high as hell and. And we didn't really see what it, what it really was. It was just something we did. And it was something that, you know what I'm saying, we all fun. did together. But then, you know, you got Boo Boo Bless and, 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 like, all them. And, uh, they was, like, the older dudes that was doing it, too. So they really, like, gave the sauce to the younger ones. And then we took it. And then we just built it up to a point where it was, like, it just it clicked. But was Mr. Hit that in them era before y'all? It was around the same time. It was around the same time. So I was just right. The music was club music, but it was just ours was for the people that really would care, which would be like kids, younger okay. kids, versus them being in the middle, like higher up age gap. People didn't, the older dudes didn't really, they was liking it, but they didn't, they disrespected it. Like yeah. they didn't care. You know what I'm saying? And, and so do you think that disconnect from that, those two, you know, those two eras kind of caused it to, to nosedive or no, what no, do you no. think? Because it was a thing where I ain't gonna lie. When it first, when it started to dissolve, it seemed like them them teach me how to Dougie guys and all them in LA was kind of you know mm-hmm. they rocked it on out a different way. It seemed to me. Now I'm just thinking about it. How that's I because felt. people want expansion out here, and when you got one person that's smart, they understand expanding, and they one of the people that lead it. They go somewhere else without that guy sometimes because everybody don't got it like that to go with them, and they go give sauce to other people. You know what I'm saying? And once they get that sauce to other people in another state, they stay might accept it, unlike ours. So what happens? Now it becomes theirs because they boosting it while we out here disrespecting it. So if we're not all on the same page, which we probably never will be, it's going to go like that. But it don't affect, you know what I'm saying, the fact that it's still a movement because now we have TikTok with people dancing. But do you, with people do you think the Soldier Boy, because he seemed to be down in this area when that was going on a yeah, lot. Do you think he was it. he was down here? Do you think he, he took some of it elsewhere as well? Or they do always th- do. You know what they I mean? They always do. Because at the end of the day, Dallas is a very melting, it's a melting pot. We got every state here. So it's always somebody coming here and taking something or somebody coming and staying here for a while and leaving. But that still ain't like the problem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it start here though. So like, to me, the problem really be the fact that people just don't have a business structure. They don't understand marketing and getting it out there. They don't understand having money to put yourself in positions of where they can't steal it. What about yeah. do the Ricky Bobby and all that? Be have, all that was going yeah. out around the same time. Still, like 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 Ryan said, you know, I promote music. 
They don't know how to market it. You know what I'm saying? We live in a market right now where it's TikTok. And ain't nobody pressing the button on it out here or trying to. Why? I can't say that. That's not true. You got you got C4S, Click for Stars, or see, right? Yeah, C4S. You got C4S. You got a couple of groups around here that's really into that, that come on this show, That, but it ain't a lot. Yeah. Like, I agree with you on but that. That's, that's now. Like, that's right now type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's right now. Literally, like, me and 10K, the one that blew Trilla up. Okay. With, with Aloha. 2019. Yeah. Yeah. There was no Trilla. It wasn't TikTok yet. It was Trilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Me it and was. K Cash. That's when the woe started getting real heavy. Yeah, we dropped the song Aloha. It took off and went crazy. But when y'all did that, did you even know what it was being well, so exactly early in the game? It, I knew exactly what it was because you got to remember 2015. I dropped Johnny Cage, so I'm learning the business at this time. Johnny Cage was my biggest song that really put Dallas on the map to where people actually were starting to pay attention to Dallas for a different type of sound. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So where we didn't have to have the boogie movement that made us here. Now, right. because Mo3 did his thing, but that's the street side. That's mm-hmm. street Freddie side. did his thing, that's the street side. Yeah. We had the hipster crowd. Right. So we had the, the, the white people, the Mexicans, and, and all that, and people that actually brought a product. Because out here, bro, you know, it's real. Black people, they hate. And they really don't buy unless you are the top street guy out here. You know what I'm saying? Merch wise and club wise, you got to go through the club out here. Music. When it yeah, comes but to go that. back to marketing too, and yeah, and, and yeah, the hustle sure, is real. Sure. Like if you really stay with nose to the ground, for sure, pushing hard and making sure. Uh, I think I think it keeps going. I think it's the way you hustle. Yeah, but that's the street side, because out here on our side, if you got a person that know how to market on the other side, yeah. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So it, it's it's like it's a different world, but how do you link to those people that make make those moves? Like uh, when you look at, um, say, uh, what's that old boy that did that deal uh, with yelling them at first? The, the one that did, he did what's his name? Bone deal, too. He'd be heavy into these deals, but I can't think of his damn name. Uh, damn. Well, I hate when I... It, it's, no, you're good. it's a dude. It'll it's a snap it's, it's, Yeah, but it's, it, it's, it's some dudes that... Older dudes that know how to market the music. I mean, they they mess with everybody. As a matter of fact, he was he was helping uh, Yo Gotti at one time. But that's why it's always good to have a team. Yeah, someone yeah. designated. Yeah, I mean, but these are industry industry industry, industry type people that know how the industry is moving and just so happen to get it right too. Because like when you look at social media and you look at the way the streets move and you trying to marinate and make all this stuff something to push into because we in real time when you're dealing yeah. with this stuff. It ain't mm-hmm. like you got a book and you know how to mark. You got to watch how the time move. I yeah. told Mike Jones on here. It was like, damn, you know, when you did that, uh, uh, that, that song, who is Mike Jones coming first round draft picks coming. And he was promoting himself like that and his name and his number. That was Top tier marketing mm-hmm. in a time where nobody wasn't doing that. But that's why you. You got, see what I'm saying? I do. I do. That's why you got artists that understand that they do need marketing, and then you got artists that can just connect through the internet that have a presence of knowing how to talk to human beings. You know what I'm saying? Correct. And that's the reason why it's a huge gap here because you got every artist attacking the wrong demographic. I you get got, it. But you got a street artist trying to go perform for a trippy red crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got uh, you know what I'm saying? You got. No, I get it. It's it's. They don't understand. There's no structure to it, and and there's no no real gatekeeper to organize or help structure it. Why you don't but think it's a real well, gatekeeper? No, but even why? Not. But the reason why I say it's not a gatekeeper is because the gatekeeper. I'm sorry, babe. My bad too. No, it, the gatekeeper that it could be, it could be the blogs, but they starting to turn into TMZ. The only one I really see that's not is. Is Dallas Global for real? Yeah, you can't just say that, nigga. No, don't I'm, do that. No, I'm, no, just, no, I'm just no, saying no, that on the note do of saying that. Not like, you gonna do that. Not inside, gonna do that. You, you, know got, like, you got a bunch of dudes out here that's really doing it. You got Trill Talk No Pilto. You gotta say my nigga name. It, it, it's certain <laughs> niggas out here that's doing it just like him that work with him as, and, and, and really respect him too in the game. I hear you. So but, you but just look, see that. But no. that's your opinion. I get it. Yeah, but look, what I'm saying. And is, that's your boy, nigga. Don't come on and try to play me, cuz. about that. I don't do interviews. Okay. I don't mess with people in Dallas like that. I know everybody and I done did it, but I don't mess with people. Why? Because they don't understand. They don't. But how are you going to help the next generation if you're not doing the stuff to to try to help them? Let me get to it because I am. But that's the point of artist development. And that's the point of sometimes you got to be quiet until you're in a position to where you can spark. You know what I'm saying? It's a patient game. It's a marathon. It ain't going nowhere. And when these artists understand that and they understand having their real life together instead of chasing something that's not for sure or for certain, then you can help them better. But you don't have people out here doing that because they catching their breaks and they dipping. I didn't dip when I caught my break. 
I went and learned the business. Got my deal on my own through Def Jam. So when I did that, I learned. I learned how to not get finessed by these white people. Wait a minute. You you say so when you went and got your deal with Def Jam. Yeah. You had a deal with Def Jam. You don't just, I, got, I went and got my deal. No, nigga. I mean, I got how did it happen? It. I grinded for how, it. Give me how some details. How long did it take for you to get it? How did you end it up dealing me, with Def Jam? It took me forever. It took me to have to step down off my horse and help another artist and see if I could really do it. 10K. So I wrote his two biggest songs, which is, and I made the beef for one, West Coast Cure, and then Aloha. I wrote a low high chorus and I did the first verse. But he already had momentum. Mm -hmm. He grinded for that momentum. He went and created something with the people called the Woe. You know what I'm saying? And so when he did that, we put it together. So therefore, now these labels are calling because he actually has music. Who all music. called you? Because he actually has who, music. Who you say these labels with the, uh, in a plural sense? Atlantic, Atlantic Motown. Motown. We want to have meetings with Motown, Atlantic, Def Jam. Um, who else was it? They kind of falling under now. It's another one. Universal. Well, why what Def Jam? Jam? That's what I was yeah, going to say. Why, 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 why pick Jam? Jam? Jam over well, Atlantic or any of the other ones? should have picked Atlantic. The <laughs> but, but real talk, it's because when we got the Def Jam, it wasn't the same type of meaning as we had with the other labels. The other labels, it was, you got a feature with Young Boy, we can get you that. You got a feature with, uh, with uh, you know, Rico Nasty, <laughs> we can get you that. That's, that's nothing. You know, they are, they're on our board. Kevin Gates, we, we already talked to them mm. because when you hot, you hot. Mm -hmm. So they already DMing us. Mm -hmm. Somebody else hot. Because uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They, if you hot, you hot. I'm sitting back on this side. You good. Oh, yeah, at the end of the day, my boy locking that door. Oh, so yeah, ain't nobody sure. We keep it locked. Nah, it's good. I'm just paranoid. I got shot three times. I'm paranoid. I'm, I'm, but you ain't got to worry about it. Then yeah. you got Terry. Terry's straight up got your back, man. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. Running right in front of the bullet for you. Nah. Don't even trip. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, but, but serious, like, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I forgot where it was. That's some good liquor. <laughs> But uh, no, but, but yeah, man. No, I, I think, I, no, no, but when you no, think okay, about it, I, like, yes, just think about it, man. You know, Def Jam is not an easy win for oh, yeah, 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 everybody yeah. ain't going and just getting a deal with Def Jam. So, you guys had a major situation going on, but detailing that situation and showing other people because that's what this platform is about. Yeah. I be trying to figure out ways to get other people to see it. I know the times and change, but business is business, business and you business. stand on business. Yeah, and you have so, a lot of young people who want to do what you've already done and yeah. don't know how to do it, just like you say you have to grind yeah. but it's not just you going out here and grinding and, and they just seeing you sometimes actually collaborating with somebody working with somebody you can reach more people than who you could reach by yourself Man. so that's how you got if you ask anybody here any artist that's coming up out here in Dallas bro they'll tell you bro it'd be so many people in my DMs about a feature I'd be like man send me some music I'm not I'm not that guy that's not gonna say something to you because I understand right. that's good. I get it and then you know what I'm saying so when they send me this music I give them constructive criticism. I tell them the real. Like, hey, bro, you should work on this, work on this. And if it's hot and you want to send me something later, send me something later. If it's hot, I'm hopping on it. We shoot the video. I'm not cool. charging you because I understand. I get it. Mm -hmm. And this is home. It's mm -hmm. home base. So if we create the organization and create the money flow here through the industry and music and people start to understand and get it, then I'm taking one step forward towards helping actually some to show everybody else how to gatekeep. But you can't just say I'm a gatekeeper because you have accomplishments. I have accomplishments. I'm not no gatekeeper though. You feel me? Cause I'm not taking the artist and then, hey nigga, you gone. <laughs> you out of here. Come here. <laughs> you out of here. <laughs> Come here. You out of here. And y'all just flourishing, going. Y'all going. Who's doing? Nobody here is doing that. Period. No, I get it, man. Nobody here doing that. So how are you wow. a gatekeeper? Yeah, but you you gotta understand, man. The people that that they put on that gatekeeper list are people that have action to help others, man. But they don't. But they do. I know. Maybe they're so you telling me Sean, Sean, Sean Cotton, Cotton was on that list? Again. Oh, man, don't get yeah, it. Yeah, let's talk about it now. I nigga for a pose. He tell uh, me my money ain't good. Oh, so you've tried to get on. Man, Sean Cotton got, come up a lot on I this show. I got of, history with Sean. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that was my boy at a point. And I, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we can hash things out and talk and we can get back to it or something. But you do too, too many sneaky things and try to tell people they're emotional but when it's really you. You from Philly. You emotional, period. I got Philly partners. They emotional. But you can't just say that. I just did. No, you can't <laughs> say that. It's because my you got to understand Philly, that, I mess that's with just it. like saying all Hispanics uh, 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 eat tamales, nigga, or tortillas, nigga. You can't say that, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I'm okay. saying it like this. They get mad faster than the next man to me. To me, from my experience of being in Philly. You can't say that about everybody. I've been to Philly. Okay, so I'm saying. I don't know about them niggas. What about Texas niggas right here? That nigga emotional. There you go. Don't that, do that. That nigga emotional. That's exactly what with, you. Because look, Uzi, my, I fuck with Uzi. That's my is problem. he emotional too? Nah, he not. He really he really not, but he is. Because, you know, so he wear his muscles <laughs> on his sleeve. But How did you meet him? I, uh, I met him like 2015. We both was on the... Uh, Post Malone show, Welcome Home, post his very first when, show in Dallas. When did that song come out when you're doing the shoulder like that, you know, that little dance? I think that was that was off with, with Super Saiyan Trunks. That was actually right after he did that show. Like, <laughs> yeah. probably like... Yeah, back, I had to understand what, what the hell that was. I was looking at like, it. Man, I was you know, trying they, to figure out what the hell dances. that was. You know, out there in Philly, they got that little... That <laughs> I little was trying dance. to figure out what that was. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is this? You know, how do I accept it? You know what I'm saying? Hey man, you know, going they, back they to Dallas, Dallas and gangster. Who's the gangster? So, wouldn't you he think when know. he put that thing in the middle of his head? You know, you know, the diamond. Just, yeah, I said, damn boy, rock star. Damn, that you was cool with star. it. Like, yeah. how you make that whole stay they, up you there? Think, like, bro, you, yeah, man, it's his expression. I am, I'm comfortable with who I am. I ain't yeah. gonna judge you. That's yeah. his expression. So he's expressing just, himself. Yeah, he just put that hole in there. I ain't like, never seen that before. Bring that shit to but, me. but, but, Sauce Walker say he did it first. Hey, and who cares? <laughs> he did it first. Okay, go get a bigger diamond. Do it hey, but this industry thing be crazy, yeah, man. Be, they be emotional, bro. I don't get it. I don't. I'm not emotional with this. How do you feel about like Sauce Walking up movement that going on in H? Rizzo, Rizzo been my family since 2015, and so I'm dumb. Guess I fuck with him. Like I fuck with how Sauce carry yourself to be an entertainer. He don't think just music. He think business and entertainment because that's what this field is. When you step on the stage. You ain't just an artist no more. You're an entertainer now, so you have to entertain these people. But that's the way his, his presence is. Is what make his image and his presence make him who Sauce Walker is. Wow. Yeah, and I I listened to his song. You know, he redid that uh, Rodney O. Joe Cooley beat. Can, that's my nigga too, right there. He yeah, well, he hit that over. <laughs> Sauce can rap, bro. That's what's crazy. <laughs> Niggas don't know they can actually rap. Yeah, that nigga go in. Yeah, he can rap. So. For sure. What what's 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 next for you? Far as what what do you want to see yourself? Here we are in the midstream of twenty twenty two. Like mm -hmm. what where do you where do you see yourself uh, ending a year? Like how are you trying to come off? What's right the now, music doing? What's going on right now? I'm uh actually like I'm just really trying to like figure out all the way this this film sinking and TV show sinking for real. Yeah. So like I've been working on like different pop tracks and like. Yeah different type of sounds and music and stuff to like send off to TV shows and movie. Next Makes month, sense. I gotta go to LA with my manager and them. And, uh, we're gonna do some writing on Aaron Carter's album Dope. for our management company as we just started called uh, Big Umbrella Company. So it's a management group we just started and it's, it's moving, man. We just signed Aaron Carter to the, uh, to the management and everything. And so we go out there next month, we do that. Songwriting, then December we tour, we're gonna do something for Christmas for the kids, like partner with Walmart and give back. Yeah. To the kids and uh, just go to different WalMarts and do some shopping sprees for them. What do you? I mean, you've built a foundation uh, around the movement. Mm -hmm. You know, you one of those guys that people look at as one, as a as a reason why we we, we in this music field. Uh, uh, how do you feel about the music where it is today in Dallas? Like, far as the oh, artists man. that 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 are are, are th thriving somewhat mm -hmm. or thriving and they big or I don't know how you think so I'm just trying to figure like, out where you at with it I feel like song wise it's amazing cause think of how far we've came from Big Tuck DSR to like you know what I'm saying from Mo3 to Asian Doll you know what I'm saying rapping how she rap her drill tape just came out uh, my boy Debbie Stones he do actual lyrical rap, do lyrical rap Bobby Sessions we got plenty of people out here in different different genres, it's, it's just too much talent. I feel like the music is at an all-time greatness. It's just, we just gotta get that business together. How do you, who do you think he left out? Probably a lot of people. Somebody that you think that he might have should have said in that group of people. Big X the plug, you know? <laughs> I oh, always say Big X the plug. Big X hard. Ain't he hard? hard. That's what I was just he telling Ray. Sure. Like, this dude is he like, hard. I heard him, and then we've had interviews with him, and. It's just, I just like his style, you know, yeah. it's his Ryan style. said it exactly like it is, bro. They got to do one thing that show he's a superstar. That's it. Yeah. There's one thing that show you a global superstar. Another artist need, uh, niggas need to look out for out here, though, Bumpy Johnson. I heard about this hey, guy. man. 
I heard this nigga the one. I might hey, need man. to talk to this dude. It mm. keep, nah, the name real. keep coming up. You know, once a nigga name start bubbling on here, I go to, I ain't even never looked him up, looked hey. him doing music, none hey. of that. Because y'all keep saying this nigga name, I got to go look this nigga up. If I, if I was to say anybody out of Dallas was next to Blow for real, for real, like next to really do something globally, it definitely would be bumping. Why? For real, for real. He got that sound. Like, he got that, he just got that soulful sound like Mo3 had. Like, it's literally either identical like Ryan probably gonna be like nah bro he down wild he ain't done this Damn. nah bro like it's crazy they they literally same structure building everything <laughs> that shit weird like it's crazy like he's really dead like when it come to this scene and he and don't come to rapping too like, and he don't he not even song. linked with 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 uh rain or none of them huh i mean i think they i think they talk uh i think they pop they cool they so might they be might be might be yeah yeah but but if there's anybody i can really say that I can say it's him, bumpy for sure. Oh, wow, that's that's big. It's real big. What do you think about uh, wasn't they Ty Ty uh, Ty Harris? Yeah, well, very talented. He played piano and everything. He talented. He talented. I would like. Why to do help, you think, I would like to help him with some songwriting. Yeah, we are, Why really you think? Why what, because a lot of people say he the most underrated. He is. He's underrated. I just feel like his song preference sometimes can make people wonder what, instead of really like embracing it and actually enjoying it. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, if he had somebody to just help him structure the writing song, I feel like he could go. What well, we had Don Chief on here the other day and and he had spoke about uh just uh the bloggers and the, you know the people who the inf- the interviewers and stuff like yeah. that like and and saying that, you know, we in in this market have a lot of influence and can help drive the artists, you know, what do you think about the whole movement of the bloggers and the interviewers and just the whole, you know, movement? Uh, I mean, you know, everybody got to get paid at the end of the day. So I feel like it just grab more talent that you can, that you see actually could do something versus trying to just charge everybody. Because there's already enough of that going on. It's enough TMZs and stuff. Like actually broadcast the talent. The more positive you are, you might not get hits at that time, but you will over time get hits and people will draw to it because they see that it's more positive than it is negative. Because, you know, we live in a world where everybody want to see negative. You know when 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 the trap boy Freddie and the, the the yellow and the Mo three and all that stuff. She was at being that time. you was Hi. you was in a you was in the music field during that time, uh, was you forced to pick a side or did you just basically stay focused on what you had going? Nah, and I have to dude. ask that I have to ask that because a lot of people start looking at like they had to be yeah. on this side or but, that side. You know I'm telling the truth, yeah, right? But it's so, like why? Because if it ain't nothing to do with you and you're not in a immediate circle, it's not your business. Already. It's a spectator sport, though. Anything you're doing out here is a spectator sport to people that don't know how to mind their business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's grown folk business. And you see how it go and how it went. So it's like it's just it's just something you don't get in. You don't indulge in it. You know what I'm saying? You don't put yourself in the middle of that. When that first happened with Mo3 uh, out there on uh, 35 and whatnot, what did you think about it? Because you being from Dallas, or now really from Dallas, what did you think when you first heard it that happened? Man, and I'm coming, asking. I know. I'm asking. I it's just like this for me. It was like, damn. Yeah. It sucked. You know what I'm saying? And, and pray for a family. Because at the end of the day, when you're outside, bro, you understand. You get it. You know what's going on. If you if you really outside, if you got partners, you lost them. And you know what's really going on between two parties. It's, it's only gonna go there, or it's gonna get resolved. It ain't no, it ain't no in between that. But so my feelings is, bro, it ain't. It suck. It ain't really nothing else to say except for R.I.P. Did you did you think the genuine the 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 way that the people responded and the thing that you see today online, the way people are responding to it? Do you think it's more? clout chasing or do you think it's more sincerity or what do you think that lies because we see with Dolph like you it's like everybody that pass away it seemed to me to that the, the wave of how people respond to it is yeah. is, is, is kind of the same way across the yeah. when you look at what happened in Cali it's with always, the artists. Gonna, am I right it's always gonna be like that it looks like look, when I got shot three times in LA I'm talking about Instagram through the roof damn you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. that's why I said this shit is the most dangerous game the rap, the rapping world, or industry, whatever people want to call it, it's the most dangerous job to have is being an artist. So at the end of the day, it's a spectator sport. 
in the world is a place where they want to see negativity. Do you? I want to talk about it, if you don't mind, you getting shot three times. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, what the hell's going on, man? Man, like, I, I, was, I was around some females that, you know what I'm saying, just put that put it in position to set up. Nigga was trying to rob me. Okay. And so nigga ran up behind me when I was trying to pull my strap out. And he was like, you know, don't move. And I was just like, man, I ain't got nothing for you. And he was just standing there. I was standing there. I tried to pull my strap out anyway. He shot me. Hit me in my leg twice, then hit me right in my neck. Did but shit, I made it up. Did you feel what did what was your thoughts when you when you got shot? Damn, karma, a bitch. Did you I, think it was I, over? I, or did you feel like you gonna nah, make it? I went. I got mad because it's like if you panic, you most likely gonna die. That's yeah. why people be dying. You panic, but I, I got mad because it's what else I'm gonna do? Cry? Shit, I'm hit. Who was there? Uh, it was just the me. girl. She she left. Who were you? She was there? No, 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 no. The girls hey, was damn. In, the girls was in a car. The girls was in a car screaming. But, okay. You know what I'm saying? I popped back up. Bro, I was already gone. I got up, hopped in the car. And they took you straight to the hospital. Took me to the hospital. Wow. How? And that was probably what saved your life, really, just yeah. just being able to jump up and go straight to the hospital instead of waiting around. That waiting yeah. around kill people too. Yeah. Facts. You they could have came back or whatever. Yeah. Anything. But so what know. part? I mean, are you a you a Cali? Is it because your father out there? Or what made you end up in Cali? We was in Cali working. With, oh, okay. Uh, Kenny Beats, FKI first. A whole bunch of people. You ride with Kenny B? Kenny Beats. Oh, Kenny B. Okay, uh, yeah, Kenny producer. Beats. This is a producer, white producer. Okay, yeah. and y'all y'all went out there. Mm -hmm. That's and when we had made the, uh, it was actually before that we had made the song Aloha, but we went back out there to work with him again and then work with uh, FKI, a couple of other artists that's out there and stuff. So did they get anything when they shot you? Or they, nah, they didn't get nothing. They didn't get nothing. They, they just basically do. False move. Damn. I was moving, I made it. Damn, you know, they just for, hate that it even mm -hmm. happened, you know, and then you out, outside of, you wasn't living up I there. I got too comfortable. You wasn't living up there. No, I wasn't. I got too comfortable, though. That was my fault. That was my karma, because I, I didn't hang on the other side of it. Yeah, so, I've been there. Yeah, so, you know, karma. I, that's how I looked at it. I ain't look at it as redemption. I ain't look at retaliation. I just said, you know what? I got to take my one on the chin. I'm still up. I'm still living. Keep moving. Go ahead, recover, and get back to it. Do you uh um so what's the uh what what did you go back to Cali after that you you I went, went back, back to, to the same spot after they let me leave the hospital Damn. I was trying to see if my goosey slides are out there are you serious I love my good them right them goosey slides were clean they were one on ones Damn I wanted to ask you, you about the music the table. she ain't gonna that ain't that ain't <laughs> that ain't what she think about let's talk about the music. Uh -huh. Um, give me some on the new music that you got going. I see something about Magneto uh, a year Magneto. ago. Magneto. But, but give uh, me something that you're working on now, Kurt. Uh, now I'm working on this tape I had recently dropped called The Gun Show. It's more of a uh, rage type, you know what I'm saying? More like on the high energy, mm -hmm. high energy, high trap, different sound. But it's more for like performance and touring. So like the shows be wild. Like my last show uh, out here probably like a month and a half ago with D Savage, my brother D Savage, he from Cali. Man, it went so crazy. Too crazy out in Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like you feel like everything's gonna go where you need it to go? How you gonna maneuver? Oh, you, yeah. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a hit. Oh yeah, for sure. It's just you gotta, you know, you gotta know how to play the game and learn it. And that's what I did. I had a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons learned. And now it's like I'm at a point where it's like I know exactly what to do now. Yeah. So now that I know what to do. I can actually solidify, and organize, and structure it, and rebrand. Are you gonna bring uh, like anybody younger up? Because oh, I think yeah. that's a for big show, problem in Dallas, for show, man. For show. Like you, when you look at these people, who do you see that bring people up under them and just in feel Dallas? like, yeah, in Dallas? Like, think about that oh. for a second. Damn. <laughs> oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You you tell me because I don't. Know. That's what I'm saying. That's why I say that gatekeeping real. I'm trying to figure out who is going to bring up the next new artist, like, and say, I was this oh, guy. Oh, Boy Prince. Hmm? He's been doing it. Who? Oh, Boy Prince. Oh, Thank you, Lang. Yeah. Oh, Boy Prince. G yeah. Who he bring? Who he who he bring? bring? You because talking about just the people he bring it up under his, his, his situation right now? Right. Yeah. Well, you could say that about different people. They oh, well, bring yeah, people under. He doing people. that. It's just we not there, like, right. clinical-wise. But I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, because yeah, he's, cause he's uh, reaching back and helping yeah. the younger artists to get on. Still develop them and everything. Right. That's exactly what you're From his to do. experiences. You be quiet until it happens. Exactly. 
Got to be quiet till it happen. You don't toot your horn. Well, Not too early. Have it happened with anybody? That you, does you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it has. We've been doing now, music right forever now. in Dallas, Texas. Where's the person that brought up somebody mm -hmm. that said he was under? He he came through me. Yeah, nobody yet. Nobody. That's sad, and I think that's a big part of why you don't see the movement like you're supposed to because I don't think the the, well, look, the the structure is there. That's exactly why I said what I said about gatekeeping. Cause you that's keep bringing that gatekeeper up in there. Hey, man, I keep seeing it, and I got to speak on it. So you feel like we got poor gatekeepers. I feel like they're not gatekeepers yet. They could be if they did a better job. But they, you're jumping the gun too, too fast. You're not there yet. I get where you want to be. I get what you've done, accomplished, but you're not there yet. But you is that us. gatekeeper are you talking about only for Dallas or is it for like Texas? It's well, for I mean, Texas because nah, you got Jay Prince. Houston, Houston do that. Exactly what you're talking about. Oh, that's what I was that. just about to see because I know sure. Jay Prince is a gatekeeper. Yeah, for, for Houston. That's why I wanted to make sure. Oh, well, you got Sean Cotton. About is Dallas. A, he did okay. a few people here. I mean, you keep, you, you got to understand, he, he, he's helped somebody, right? I mean, yeah, but. Who? Like, for real, for real, who? Because it's, it seems like they always go somewhere else. Or they, it's always a problem where they just not doing nothing. I don't know who. Spot him, got him. He not That's, from Dallas. Yeah, he not from Dallas, but he still helped his wave. Yeah, of course. But who is he? We talking about Dallas. But we... This Dallas. That's our problem. We know Florida. That's Florida. This Dallas. So you're he, talking about Dallas gatekeeper to help man, people I, from Dallas. Yeah, us. Never them. You got do that too. Rainwater much. was on on the. He the only one for real that that I can see that's actually doing something and trying to do something. Like that's actually doing something. I'm trying to remember moment. who I was on that list. Terry, who was on that? Lil Zach. Nah, Zach wasn't on there. Who y'all took he him out? Some, who else was on there? Zach got accomplished. Who? Real life street stars on there. Uh, what? Baby on there. Baby on there. Baby on there. What about Baby? Radio oh, we finna start calling names. Baby. Who they, who they bring up? <laughs> This nigga right here, boy. You're I fuck with baby, man. <laughs> but he baby never cool. he never brought nobody but to But I just don't see it's like who? Who are y'all blowing up? Not the accomplishments. I I commend y'all on them. Everybody got accomplishments. Everybody got toilet paper too. So at the end of the day, it's like, bro, it's not a consistent flow of if I grab this artist, he lit in a month. Or he lit in in, in you know what I'm saying in two weeks. Oh, next one, come on. You get what I'm saying? Like a machine. Why? Clockwork. I think that's where people like you come in. Because you, you've you seen the process. Yeah. You've been a part of the process. Yeah. How do you activate the process throughout the Dallas market? You got to fix the business structure here because everybody wants 50% right? of something they ain't did. It's a lot of people that want 50% of higher than they ain't did nothing. But I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. How would you do it? How oh, yeah, are you? Through artist development. Through artist development and showing you how to actually use your money. Showing you how to actually spend it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really the only way. You got rap a lot down there and you you really I think Sean just said They press the button on anything and put the bread behind it. We don't have that type of push here. That's my point. We don't. We don't have that type of push here. So we have to create that push here. And how you do that, you gotta go get money. Go get your real life together first before you chase a dream. You got to create it first. You got to have your real life together first to where you can spend the money that these people spend. These people spend a million dollars on their artists. These artists ain't, they not spending 100K or 150K. They're spending 300K plus on these major artists because they understand TV. They understand getting them on the Jimmy Kimmel show. They understand. They get it. They understand the business. They understand the connection they have with that. We don't have that here. And we don't have people that understand how to obtain it. Because they doing what they doing. Calling themselves gatekeepers with no no gate. Damn. Keeping the dough. Well, you know, I I see I see the gatekeeper list, man, and uh I see it too. And uh I seen I, it. I just I don't speak on it in there. You don't even I come to your show first and say it's on you. Yeah, but I'm glad you did because this yeah. is the hottest show in America. In my first interview in Texas. Man. Like for real, for real. Yeah, this whole hard though. Oh you know I was talking one on one. Oh boy, okay. you better get a boy, you better get a million views with hey, this man, one. That yeah. ain't, ain't like Ryan shit. It ain't enough, man. We need twenty. Nah, we you know, we just gotta keep we gotta keep uh applying the pressure. Yeah. I think we got something special in the Dallas market, man. With with guys like you, Jules, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. We I think uh the process is beginning to where like I say, you got people who got great platforms like the the uh 
Mogul Media, the Dallas Globals, you, the Trio Talk, No Peel Talks. I, I got you got some dope people that that really got some waves. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I think that in a year, if we can keep keep consistency going, that it's going to even be a greater movement. And I think you'll be prouder to come back. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And sure. be, we'll be able to, we, we got some things in the works, right? Mm -hmm. We spending money behind the scenes. So it's some stuff that's going on. I don't speak on it because I got to let it come to fruition. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the reason why, like, old Prince, oh, you know what I'm saying? Prince ain't speaking on that, tune his horn, because he got to do it just like that. Yeah. But that's how it should be. But at the same time, I'll be saying, like, even with everybody here, the people that are the gatekeepers, why the hell y'all ain't had no meeting together? If y'all on that list, why y'all ain't had no full room meeting? I don't think that, I don't, I don't, I don't think that we're there yet. I think that this, meeting? the list, the list is being made by, uh, you know, unbiased journalists. But see, think about it. You see what I'm saying? They just saying, we see what these guys are doing. Okay. So they're not saying, y'all got to get together. But what we, that's what, I'm, that's what we need. Cause, cause why aren't, why aren't y'all saying this list and saying, Hey man, let me get on the phone with bro and them. And let's have us a little mean real quick and really see what we could do. A room full of people that another person feel like are doing something for the city. Why is that so hard? You feel me? Like, why is it so hard to get the people that actually understand what's, what's going on outside and put these ideas together? It's too much pride and ego. Let me tell you something, man. The, the way I see it is that God, I'm a God-fearing man, Dude. so I really believe that. So a lot of times in the Bible, you know, when, when you look at what happened in the Word, uh, it was a time when Moses and them was, was in, a, in a wilderness, and they couldn't get out, right? And so when they couldn't get out, God let the, you know. God let them die off because they didn't believe in a way to where they could get out. Yeah, and let the younger people come up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you got to let these ones who just out here going in circles and not making you the things let them happen. Go in because God gonna let them. He gonna pretty much he let them. Bump, bump he gonna in. weed them out for the younger generation. So I think that could be a part of the process. I hate to be in that whole you cycle let me, though. Let me give you my real answer. Go to ahead. That question. Greed. Greed. They don't want to see other people. Exactly. It, Bro, that, I agree with too, that. It's too many percentages that go different ways, and they don't think that it's enough. Bro, I'm going to tell you something. That's my opinion. No, I agree with it. It makes perfect sense because when I first started this platform, just getting people to come over here, shout out to, uh, like I say, Trill Talk, No Peel Talk, Dallas Global, Mogul Media, and they know how I am. BD. I, I, I don't ride with I ride with the same niggas that, that, that ride roll with me, you yeah. know. And I don't change up, I don't switch up. And I'm not being mean, but I just don't act like I know everybody because I don't. Yeah. And I just I love the ones who love me. I get to love, you know what I'm saying. That was the, my first manager. Yeah, but at the end of the day, they show me, you know what I'm saying, mad love and respect. So no. I'm just saying that's the way I roll. And and I, would I connect with other people who I really don't know and who re really I don't know if they have my best interest at heart. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I know so I get saying. where you're coming yeah. from, where I get together, but uh, it's, it's hard to get together with people that, that. It's just a conversation. You got to put the pride and the ego down, the emotions in the back of you, you know what I'm saying, out the way. If yeah. you can do all them three things and kill that, then I guarantee that you can have a civilized conversation amongst men. And another thing, though, like if you, a person who just got into this and I'm be doing it a year, mm -hmm. you just trying to see where are you going with it. Yeah. That's one of my big deals is yeah. just trying to understand what it is and where I'm going with it. And like, that's big for me. Like, don't mess it up because you don't really know where you're going with it. But those other people that have been doing it forever, forever. I, I don't know. They, I reached out to some of them. They yeah. didn't even hit me back. But see, look, I've been doing it since 2014, 2015, had a little thing and then going on so forth. And it's our first time really ever yeah. talking. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's perfect timing. Yeah. Because at the end, like you said, God for a man, man, we, we meet on perfect time. Yeah. Terry made the call. And it's first time me and Terry well, really. I appreciate you, man. He did something. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying? It's meant to be. Because I, like I said, I don't do it. I don't talk to people. I don't no, do I interviews. Just, I, don't, I don't even like, I don't like people. Man, you and Big Tuck either. Big Tuck don't like people. Me and him talk. Too he, many, too many heartbreaks, man. <laughs> Too many times. Yeah, I said back, Big man. Tuck don't like me. We talk. He said, "Man, I don't like doing the interviews, man." Yeah, yeah. I, I like boss talk dope, man. It's live, you know. I just don't, yeah. I don't like it, you know. And I get it, and I'm cool with it, you know what I'm saying? I understand what, cause I'm the type of person that I want nobody that don't want me anyway. Yeah, and I'm doing this off the strength, right? We ain't doing Facts. this. We ain't out here Facts. charging no nigga nothing Facts. like that. We get, we get the people that God sent to us like you, and then we holding on. I just mm -hmm. told you, you know what I'm saying? Whenever you coming back through and. 
three months from now, six months from now, we'll hopefully we'll be in a better place and be able to put the light on your brand better Thanks. and be able to, you know, help. That's well, what I this, mean, and, you know. and all the talking is dead. Like, mm -hmm. these niggas just talking, and uh, no, nah, we really trying to do something special with the people like you who I see really, you know what I'm saying, they're rocking with us, and I appreciate you for coming on the show today. No, for sure, I appreciate right? y'all having me. Man, so, so how can people get a hold of you? No, hell no. Top three <laughs> artists of all time, dead or alive. Oh, top three all yeah, time? Yeah, all alive. time. Dead or alive. Man. Let's see if you go with the regular stuff. Hey, man. And if you go with something different, it's up to you. Your top three. Number three. Number, oh, you're going three to three, two, one? Artists? Yeah. It, any the, genre. Rapper. Any Artie genre. Rapper. Okay. Of I'm all time. I'm three. I'm going to have to go with, uh, I'm going to have to go with Wayne. I'm going to go with Wayne. He in the side. Go two. ahead. Two, I'm gonna have to go with, you know, people ain't be like this. Uh, and I gotta lie. <laughs> but number two, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, I'm gonna have to go with Gucci. That's my nigga too, boy. Number yeah. one, no one. I'm gonna have to go with Michael Jackson. Everybody say Mike though. That that, that Mike is written, but Gucci, problem, Gucci man. don't really get a lot of lot of shine, do he? Like he should. Nah, man, that's my real. boy, man. man. He had a man. Come on, man. Goo man. That goo wop go hard, don't he, man? Some, man. He what was your some. favorite favorite uh, song that he ever did? My favorite song goo wop did, man. I probably have to say kick a dough. <laughs> 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 You good know. I ain't gonna lie. That yeah. boy's serious. He did so to me, man. He did so to me. Well, you know, you know how, I, like I said, man, you, it, it, it take a real one to, to just come and see us like this, though, right? Come through and see us, and we appreciate you and for this spending boss time. Talk one on one. Where man. the bosses talk, on, man. man. Say, hey, man, so where, how can people get a hold of you? I mean, look, all social media, you can get me at Gun Music 40. You know what I'm saying? You can call me at uh, Nah, I'm playing. No, you don't no. get you no know, I like Mike Jones used to. No, I ain't doing that. <laughs> you see, he changed his number after No, he got it back, though. He got it back? Yeah, he came on here. He got his number back. Hell, I, I might call him tonight. I don't oh, know. Yeah, everybody yeah. got a 281-330-8004. Y'all call Mike. Don't call me. You know? <laughs> nah, really, man, man, thank you for coming on the show. Anything else you got for him? Man, you know what, man? Uh, did we cover everything? I oh, man, we good, man. Man, awesome. it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss. Just talk. And we have.